Hey, everyone, it's you'll be blessed here, making it clear, making it plain, opening up the heavens for my teaching is like spring rain. And today we're going to learn how to multiply those powers of the same base. Let's go. All right, so let's get started with our lesson on multiplying powers of the same base, a um, lesson of exponential functions in algebra. All right, let's go over our objective and our key concept. So our objective is students will be able to apply the principles of factoring in order to multiply powers of the same base. And our how are we going to accomplish that? Through our key concept, which is logical patterns create simplified form. So we're going to use logic and identify patterns to solidify or reinforce the fact that we can multiply powers of the same base. OK, it's a principle of factoring. OK. All right. So for every non-zero number a and integers m and n, then a to the m power times a to the n power is equivalent to or equal to a to the m plus n. OK, so A is the base again. The base needs to be non-zero and M and N have to be integers in order to make that happen or they, they need the preferably integers. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with our first example. OK, so let's move on to our first example. All right. We're going to simplify 11 to the fourth times 11 to the third. So if I was to simplify this problem, which answer would it be? A, 11 to the first, B. 11 to the 7th or C, 11 to the 12th. Well, if you were to follow the rule, you are to add the exponents whenever you multiply powers of the same base. So I would end up rewriting 11 to the 4th times 11 to the 3rd as 11 to the 4 plus 3 powers. All right. Once I do that, I can continue to simplify and follow through with the addition process. And then that will give me the answer. 11 to the 7, 4 plus 3 equals 7. So the exponent needs to be 7 while the base remains 11. OK, pretty simple, right? Excellent. I'm glad. I'm very, very glad that you agree with me. Just nod your head, nod your head. OK, good. So next, we're going to continue with some more examples. So let's talk about how this works. Whenever you have these powers, you can simply just expand them or rewrite them in expanded form. When you take 11 to the fourth and write it in an expanded form, that's 11 times 11 times 11 times 11. That's four 11s. And then if you take 11 to the third and expand it, you get 11 times 11 times 11. That's three more 11s. So we have 11 listed out seven times. Well, when you are to condense that back together, you end up getting 11 to the seventh power. OK, so that's why this rule of multiplying powers with the same base works. The expanded form shows you how those num the total number of repeating 11s you have is the amount of factors that you need. So the amount of factors makes up that exponent. Seven factors. So seven is the exponent. Next example. So this time we have a problem with a negative base, negative base, negative base. OK, and so we're going to go ahead and simplify. So if I have negative five to the fifth power, all right, times another negative five to the seventh power, what would the answer be? Would it be A, negative five quantity to the 12th power? B, negative five quantity to the 35th power? C, negative five quantity to the second power? Or D, five to the 12th power? All right, and in order to complete this problem, you would need to go ahead and combine the exponents through addition. So I rewrite negative five. I rewrite my answer as negative five quantity to the fifth plus seven power. Fifth plus seven power. Five plus seven is going to give me twelve. But hold up, hold up. So I have negative five quantity to the twelfth power. Well, you're not done because if you happen to be taking a standardized test, your answer may not end like this. You may have to simplify even further. So in the event that you take a standardized exam and you don't see this answer, you still need to remember one thing. Well, several things, but this is one thing you need to remember. 
and that is in your previous algebra classes or math classes, you hopefully should have learned that if you have an even exponent, the base becomes positive. So this answer actually simplifies to D, 5 to the 12th power, okay? But if for some reason you take a standardized test, I don't know why they would leave it as negative 5 to the 12th, but um, if you have an even exponent, it takes the base and it makes it positive in the long run, okay, when you simplify it. Next, all right, now we have a decimal as our base. Let's see how this still works. Well, the rules actually don't change. It don't change as long as A is a non-zero number, then we're good to go. So let's do this. 0 0.6 to the negative third power times 0 0.6 to the negative eight power. What do we need to do? Well, one of these answers is going to give us 0 0.6 to the negative 11th, 0 0.6 to the 11th, 0 0.6 to the 24th, or 0 0.6 to the 5th. Which one is it going to be? In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and combine these terms, combine the bases through um, the addition of the exponents. So when we do this, we get net, we get point zero. I'm sorry, zero point six to the negative three plus negative eight power. So a negative three plus a negative eight gives us a negative eleven. All right. And so the answer turns out to be A in this situation. So here's our, our final example before we move on to some more difficult problems that, that are, have multiple steps to them. But um, let's go ahead and simplify three terms, three terms, three bases. And we're going to simplify into one term because they're the same base. So we have 7 to the negative 3, 7 squared times 7 to the 6. So which answer is this going to be? A, 7 to the negative 36, B, 7 to the 36, C, 7 to the 5th, or D, 7 to the 11th power. If you rewrite these, combine the bases, and then you um, use the addition of the exponents as um, advised by our rule or our property, you're going to get 7, and when you combine all the exponents, you get negative 3 plus 2 plus 6. All right. Some of the common mistakes I see is people try to multiply all the exponents. No, it's the it's multiplying the powers with the same base. And when you do that, you add the exponents. All right. So negative three plus two plus six gives us five, positive five. So the answer is seven to the fifth power. OK, so I hope you got this because we're about to step up our game. Just just a wee bit, just a wee bit. But I hope you can see that we're just simply using logical patterns to actually create simplified forms of what we start with. All right. OK, so this time we're not just working with numbers, but we're working with variables, variables, variables. OK, and so we're still going to apply the same process, but there's going to be a, maybe one or two additional steps in these problems, which makes it a little bit more difficult for some people. And that's OK, because I'm here to make it clear, make it plain because my teaching is supposed to be like spring rain. So let's do this. OK, so we got 5x to the fifth times 8x to the negative 12th power. What do we do first? Well, here's what I always suggest doing is that if you're writing this out by hand, make sure you reorganize your terms. So you're going to use the commutative property to actually rearrange all these terms because it's all multiplication. So all multiplication, we rearrange the terms. We're going to put the 5 and the 8 out front as multiplication. And then we're going to put x to the 5th and x to the 12, negative 12 at the end, all right, in, within multiplication, okay? So next, we can go ahead and continue simplifying this problem like we've been doing in the past. So 5 times 8 is going to give us an integer, which is 40, and then... Um, we're going to add the exponents on the, that have the base of x. So 5 plus a negative 12. Okay. So if we are taking 5 plus a negative 12, that's going to take us to a negative 7. So when we, con when we continue to simplify this, we get 40x to the negative 7. But are we done yet? No. Another thing students tend to forget is that they tend to forget to use all the properties of exponents that they may have been taught. All right. 
And so what you want to do is make sure that most most of the time when you're taking an exam, there's not going to the final answer will not have a negative exponent. OK, the only time we use negative exponents um, regularly is when we are dealing with scientific notation or in scientific measurements. So we got to continue simplifying this. So if you have a negative exponent, we have to flip it over. All right. And then remove or change the sign, change the sign of the exponent, just the exponent, just the base with the exponent on it. So then we're going to get 40 over x to the positive 7. OK, 40 over x to the positive 7. So let's try another one. This time we have 2a times 7b to the fifth times 3a squared. If I were to simplify this, which answer would it be? Would it be a 12a cubed b to the fifth? Would it be b 42a cubed b to the fifth? C 42a squared b to the fifth? Or D 12a squared b to the fifth? And so let's continue to work this problem out. It, we're going to combine, we're going to rearrange the terms, excuse me, rearrange the terms, put all the coefficients together, put all the variables together. So we got 2 times 7 times 3, all right? Next, we have a to the first power, okay, times a to the second power. So even though there was no exponent on a, that exponent by default is 1. And then... We're going to go ahead and tack on b to the fifth at the very end. Let's continue to simplify. When we do that, we get 42. So 2 times 7 times 3 is 42. And then we're going to add the exponents for the base of that have the base a. All right. So that's a to the 1 plus 2 power. And then b to the fifth stays the same. As we continue to simplify, guess what answer we get? we get 42a cubed b to the fifth, that is b. So I hope you chose the right answer or you had an inkling that b was the correct answer. If you are getting these answers right, I just want to take a minute to applaud you. Good job, good job, good job if you're still hanging in there because this is not easy for everybody, but I hope it's becoming clearer to you as we go through this lesson, all right? All right, so here's the last example I'm going to leave you with before I end this lesson. Here I already did the work but there might be a mistake in this problem. So I need you to tell me what did I do wrong? Is it A, I did nothing wrong. I did this problem absolutely perfect, perfectly. B, I reorganized my terms incorrectly, okay? Or C, I assume that there was no, that no exponent means zero, all right? And there's no D, there's no cho answer choice D for you to pick from, all right? So I hope you caught this. Because um, one of the most common mistakes that I even mentioned in the previous problem is that if you look at 3x, 3x doesn't have an exponent on it. But just because it doesn't have an exponent on it doesn't mean that it's zero or it has a power of zero. And that's a big assumption that students make a lot. So you want to watch out for that. So the reality is, is that when I rewrite my first, when I rewrite this problem for the first time, the x that comes that is associated with 3x has a power of 1 on it. So when I'm doing the addition, I want to make sure I do um, 4 plus 9 plus 1. OK, that's going to give me a power of 14. Everything else is correct. I, re I organize my terms correctly. 5 times 3 is 15. OK, so that's why the final answer is going to be 15 times x to the 14th power and not 15 times x to the 13th. So here's our correct answer right here. OK, so that concludes today's lesson. I hope you understood the fact of how we could apply principles of factoring to multiply powers of the same base. And remember, logical patterns create simplified forms. OK, so patterns, patterns identified in factoring, OK, is what helps us simplify these forms or create simplified forms. All right. Thank you for tuning in to You'll Be Blessed Education. I really hope you were truly refreshed by this teaching. And if you were, there are several things you can do. First, you can click the like button below. Second, you can leave a comment below describing how you were blessed by this video. Third, share this video with anybody you know that will be blessed by this teaching. And fourth, subscribe to this channel for future content. 
Again, thank you for tuning in to You'll Be Blessed Education. This is You'll Be Blessed. Be blessed. I'm out.